Hey everybody, welcome back. So I want to start this video off by showing you this pile of motorcycles here. Just take a take a look at that. Now, as some of you know who have been following my videos, this bike right here, I have had a number of videos on the restoration of this so-called Left for Dead CBX. And it came off that pile of bikes that I just showed you. So uh, this is the final video on the restoration of this bike. And uh, worked out that I've got 42 videos showing the complete step-by-step -step restoration of this bike. And I know some of you have been following it all along, but those of you who are new to the channel, uh, check out the uh, playlist on this bike. And again, here is the pile of motorcycles that that bike came from. So uh, I want to start off by showing you some before and after photographs. Um, and I'm just going to let the camera run here for a minute. But uh, the after photos are the way the bike is now. I just finished the assembly of the bike. And uh, this is just to uh, let the camera go here for a minute. So this final video is going to start out showing some of the photographs that I took of the bike when I disassembled it. And this is before I started my YouTube channel, so I don't really have any videos of me taking the bike apart. But here are some photographs of the initial disassembly of the bike. And then this video here is going to kind of be a compilation of all the videos that I did on the bike along the way. And some of these uh, videos are clips from, from the previous videos that I did on the bike. And again, if you'll check my, my uh, playlist on my YouTube channel, you will see a lot of the detail video on these clips here. So the rest of the video here is going to be kind of sped up a little bit uh, to sh for, for the sake of time. But uh, I will be showing, you know, the overall assembly of the bike once all the parts were reconditioned, powder coating was done, painting was done, the engine was rebuilt completely, and all the parts and pieces were cleaned up and, and uh, restored and ready to, to, to be reassembled. So I'm going to let the video kind of run here uh, in silence, and I will chime in here and there at, you know, specific points of the video. These final clips of the of this final video here were kind of taken over the last few months uh, since I posted the last video on this bike, and um, so it, just for the sake of time and speed and so on, I wanted to kind of show what the bike has gone through since the last video. The bike turned out beautiful, and at the end of this video, I will be showing some of the original photographs again of the bike, and and uh, uh, it's interesting to compare them with the way the bike is now. So.
I tried to keep as many of the original parts from the bike as possible. Uh, some of the parts and pieces were destroyed by the pile of bikes and forklifts that had been moving the bike around and, and so on. So uh, there are a lot of things that are new on the bike, of course, like uh, NOS Sport Kit and uh, wheels and tires and all that. Wheels are NOS out of the box. But the bike had had some funky wheels on it originally anyway. And all the bodywork on the bike had been destroyed. Uh, but, but overall, the frame and the swing arm and the, all the kickstands and the front end, the forks, everything were all original uh, to the bike. The bike sat in that pile of bikes for 25 years, and in the, in the Santa Cruz Mountains, which uh, can be very wet at times, and so the bike was pretty much a total loss once I had gotten the bike. These are all part of the NOS Sport Kit that I installed on the bike. You can see I'm struggling getting that cap on because the springs are pretty tough when you first put those on. Again, the handlebar switches from the NOS Sport Kit, which have shorter wire harnesses on them for the shorter bars. You'll notice the bike only has one mirror on it because for some reason or another I only had one brand new mirror and I've got another one ordered now. As noted there on the screen, that is an NOS headlight shell, which anybody who knows these bikes, the headlight shell is probably one of the hardest parts to find for a, an original CBX. And I've been lucky enough to have two or three NOS ones that I have ac accumulated over the years. That alternator is not the original alternator to the bike. Um, again, if you'll refer to some of the original photographs of the bike, uh, the forklift had totally destroyed the original alternator. But things like this rear sprocket uh, are original to the bike. I just restored it.
By the way, the foot pegs on this bike, again, are very hard to find, really nice NOS ones. Uh, I, I found a full set of NOS foot pegs years ago, and I've had them put away for the right bike. And if you'll notice on a lot of these scenes, the, the foot pegs are just beautiful and brand new. So the, the, those are very hard to find for this bike. As noted there, I have a full video on the restoration of the gauges. And these are the gauges that I feature in that video. More parts from the NOS Sport Kit. In this case, it's the shifter which is different for the sport kit. By the way, the sport kit is was an option for these bikes in the US only. The rest of the world, the bikes came with the low bars and the rear sets. But in, in the US, they came with high bars and forward controls. So that's what the sport kit is. It's the European set up basically. Again as noted I have a I have two videos part one and two on these carburetor rebuild. By the way, this wire harness is the original wire harness to the bike. So one thing about the bike, as bad a condition as it was in, the wire harness had never been cut or, or molested, basically. So I cleaned it up and, and retaped the whole wire harness as I showed earlier in this video. And it turned out really nice. I had to replace a couple of the plug heads that had been broken and corroded, but other than that, it was in pretty good shape. bike has a lot of NOS parts on it. That's an NOS um, crash bar. Both wheels are NOS fresh out of the box. Uh, the front fender and the rear tail section and seat are NOS. The sport kit of course is NOS. The foot pegs, the headlight shell, uh, the pipes which I just showed. It just showed me putting those on. This gas tank has been painted, but again, I uh, my body shop pretty much nails it on the paint. 
So here's the final assembly on it. And this next scene is that I will be starting the bike for the very first time. After 25, 30 years of being in that junk pile. By the way, that license plate frame shows Fremont Cycle Center, and that's where the bike originally came from. Apparently, the story is there was a guy who was working there as a mechanic, and he was taking, he owned property up in the Santa Cruz Mountains between San Jose and Santa Cruz um, in Northern California, and he owned property up there, and he would take bikes from the shop that were left that were traded in left abandoned and also he bought some and he just accumulated many many hundreds of bikes and just piled them up in a big mountain of bikes and that's where this bike came from and i just happened to have a fremont cycle center license plate frame from the day so i cleaned it up and uh looks great on the bike So that's going to do it for this video and also for this restoration of this bike. And again, like I said before, go, go to my YouTube channel, hit the playlist, and you'll see all 42 videos on, on the restoration of this bike. So uh, thank you so much for watching this and keeping track of this video, of this restoration. And... Uh, Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will be producing more videos on more bikes. Uh, I've got an 1100F that I'm doing. Uh, I've got my 69 Camaro Z28 and a few other things going on, too. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. And by the way, wait till the very end here. In just a minute, uh, there is a shot of me starting the bike up for the very first time. So uh, that's coming up here in a few seconds.